I'm Coach Nicholas Summerfield, and I've got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the coins go hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? next who got next the slt ready set go welcome back sports life talk nation to another fire episode of sports life talks you got next hey this is season three and we are giving exposure to the voices of tomorrow that's right kevin and i we are searching high low far wide and we're finding rising stars in our communities who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams and guess what espn ain't they too scared to tell these stories but we gonna tell you one today of a, a rising superstar a coaching phenom probably one of the coolest guys you're gonna get to meet off the field and i'm gonna tell you guys this rock hill thing that's going on up there in the prosper frisco area i don't know exactly i, I, I drove by it. i don't know exactly the location but man it is cooking it is cracking it is popping up there but hey 11 years experience in the game. Hey, a brand ambassador for the THSCA. This dude is a rock mentor in the game. He's one of the silky smoothest coaches in the DFW area. Let's make some noise for the assistant football coach at Rock Hill. Blue Hawk Nation, make some noise for Coach Nicholas Summerfield. <laughs> coach, how you feeling today? Hey, I'm juiced up after that, man. If you can't get hyped up after that intro, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> hey, well, I'm hyped up too, Coach, but I'm hyped up because it's been, we tried to get some people from Rocky. I'm glad finally somebody answered the call and said, hey, we want to come on and tell, put the DFW on notice. Because me and Kevin, we, we interview people from around the country, but it's nothing like interviewing people from DFW because I will say it again, this is the most difficult amateur athletic market in the country. It don't get more talent and more, 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 more coaching, more resources and what you have here in the state of texas especially in the dfw area but before we get started allow me to reintroduce myself i am your host the mouth of the south b jones the og all things louisiana put your l's up mr yeet is in the building and i'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother the other side of the logo the choir storm Shh. the head coach kt kev how you feeling today man B. Jones, it's Sunday, so you know what that means, right? Yeah. It could be Friday. It, it could be Friday. Well, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's a football day, B. Jones. So whenever we can talk football, it's a great day, man. So let's turn up. Let's go. Kevin, you, you going to pad up today? You going to put your pads on? You going to do something? No, I'm playing hurt, man. I don't think they want me out there, man. I don't want to be my 40% of myself. I, I don't want to do coach like that, man. Coach, tell them, tell them availability is, is the best feature you can have, ain't it, Coach? We need them on the field. Best ability is availability. Av av yeah. Availability. We can't do nothing with you on the sideline, well, Kevin. Because I, I don't think he want a, a, a dude that's like 45 years old and banged up out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. You got to remember, don't matter who you are, you still got one good play in you. We got, hey, that's all we need, one good play. Right. Okay, Kevin. you know what? I'm ready, Coach. Let's there you go. go. There you go. go. We're rolling. <laughs> Hey, check this out, Coach. Before we have some fun, we, we got we to gotta get ready for this ride, all right? So we need you to grab your right hand. We need you to reach across. We need you to take that strap. We need you to buckle up because this thing is about to be a fun ride. Check this out. Before we get started, Rock Hill, we need y'all to show us some love. We need y'all to help us to grow this platform to keep this movement going. We got so many good things cooking, shows like this down the road, but we need your help. And you can help us out. And listen, we would appreciate anything. If you got money, you want to say, send it. But that ain't what I'm asking for. What I'm asking for is for you to do three Three small things. Three small things. The first one, smash that subscribe button. Become a part of the Sports Life Talk family. Help us to grow this platform. Show the world what is cracking down here in the DFW area and all of these amazing voices and personalities. Number two, 
We need you to hit that like button. Hit it as many times as Elon Musk will allow you to hit it. That's right. Just, we want this show to bubble up in the algorithm all the way to the top. And then number three, last thing, sharing is caring because we good people. That's right. That's, that's part of our culture ingrained in us. We know you got to give to somebody else. So think of the first five people that come to your mind and share this episode right now before we can get started. Or better yet, take that link right there on the YouTube and say hit the share button and just throw that in one of your one of your family groups. All right? so send it to your Memo, your Papa, send it to all of them and let them know what's cracking and what's cooking down here in the DFW area. All right? Coach Summerfield. Is 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 is, is Rock Hill gonna rock with us? Cause I, I don't know. I think the color palette, the uniforms, I don't think it get no doper than Rock Hill, but I still <laughs> I gotta I gotta get that evidence, you know what I'm saying? Because right yeah, now right. we still trying to find who the dopest high school in the DFW area is. So, so are we gonna get some love up there? Uh, absolutely. It's a little bit different here on the south side. So I can tell you right now, they'll support you guys through and through. Yeah, all right, here we go. On the count of three, Rock Hill. Let's do it like we true to it. One, two, three. Boo! Come on, come on, come on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wait, the phone going crazy. Hey, this is my favorite part of the show because I ain't going to sleep tonight because I know everybody from Rock Hill going to be in the comments. They're going to be reaching out to us. It's super, super exciting. But check this out. If you did smash that subscribe button, we want to first and foremost say thank you for joining the Sports Life Talk family. We don't do fans. We don't do followers. We leave that for everybody else. We do family around this. When y'all see us at the Rock Hill game or y'all see us around the north side, y'all holler. Let us, hit us up, let us know, and uh, we want to personally reach out to you. And also, put leave us a fire emoji in the chat if you did it, all right? Throw us a fire emoji and let us know if you did any of those three things. All right, Coach? It's time to line them up. Kevin Blood Whistle. We, we need to get that, that whistle feature on this thing. It's time to line short. up. Hey, we try, we're going to do some pads. We're going to do some one-on-ones, Coach. Here you Let's go. It, hey, are you ready for the Sports Life Talk initiation? Let's do it. All right, Coach, initiate you into the SLT family. Got to give us your top five music artists. And top five. So right now I'm looking at Foo Fighters. Definitely number one on my list. Uh, when you go down the list there, now you got Alabama Shakes. Uh, also heard down the list. Oh, you got to check them out. Brittany Howard is an amazing singer. Um, you probably heard her work before you heard you know her title there. Uh, Growing Up Chameleon Air was also huge on RN. I'm the Houston rap and influence from, from K-Town. Uh, Growing Up in Colleen. Definitely had a big part there. Shout out to uh, Toby Nwigwe, UNT alum as well. Definitely doing some big things in the rap game. And then uh, at the end of the day, got to go with my wife's favorite, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Never go <laughs> give, it away, give it away, give it away, give it away. Give it away. Yeah. 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 All right, Coach, so we like to rank everybody's top five. And the highest you can get is five. But Perfect. you brought some new heat to the to the top five, so we really appreciate that. So, B. Jones, you said that he's been coaching how many years? Uh, 11 years. But I'm, I really say 13. But that's, you, you know, 13? that's amazing. Well, Semantics. you know, you from Louisiana, so your count is kind of off. So this is give fifteen for his top five. We're gonna give him fifteen. So, so you made it harder. So you went up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cause I didn't really trust your thirteen, and I knew fifteen. I, you, man, whatever. You did a great job, B. Joe. Thank you, man. Great Thank job. you. Louisiana, y'all didn't. He didn't let y'all down on that one. All right. So, who is your favorite superhero, and why? Man, I'll tell you right now, growing up, it was Batman. It was the animated series, just something about that character, just having the wits, being a great detective, being able to analyze the situation and, and come out on top. That was always pretty cool to see. Um, obviously, with the growth of the MCU, Iron Man has been kind of the top favorite there, you know, kind of riding that train until uh, the last movie they had with Thanos and Endgame and all that stuff. So it's been cool to kind of see that as a kid and as an adult, kind of seeing yourself in that shoes as far as someone that has the ability to do something great, no matter what the circumstance is, and then turn that into something positive for the community, positive for you know, who they are and, and what they're about. So I want you to give me your top three Batman actors. Give me your top three. Man, can't go wrong with Christian Bale. I know, um, oh man, put me on the spot on that one. I gotta give some respect to Ben Affleck. Like I said, he's yes. kind of screwed to that old 90s sitcom character. Yep. So I'll give him on that one. And then uh, Michael Keaton. You know, just iconic. Yeah! Boy, it's, not, it's a very unique style. Obviously, not everybody's cup of tea, but you know, he did a great job with that role, and, and those are those movies are still entertaining. You know, yes. what you look at it, but and when you talk about those characters and what they were trying to represent, obviously, they did a pretty good job. The you only know, ones you would have said something I would have I would have threw the boo emoji on is uh, if you had said like George Clooney, I'll or, take Adam West. Yeah, or the new one. 
the new one. I, I wasn't feeling. That's the one bad. He was different. It was a detective. I, was, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't feeling uh, True Blood. Or what, 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 what is it? Uh, <laughs> so he's Twilight. No Team Edward on that one? <laughs> this dude said True Blood. That was a good show, too, though. <laughs> but on the Batman thing, Ben Affleck portrayed him the best because that's how his actor should be. But Michael Key. Hmm. Hands down is the GOAT, but I do not like the way they did him in the Flash. All right, so uh, now they got thrown off B. Jones. The Batman talk got me just worked up. All right, so since every, <laughs> since every good superhero needs their own theme music, and we see all coaches as superheroes, what would your theme song be? I remember growing up, it was Mo City Dawn, and of course everybody knew the freestyle, and that's what you got hyped up before the game. Uh, you had some Pimp C going on at the time, knocking doors down. Uh, but going back to my favorite artist is Foo Fighters and, and Learn to Fly. That's always been a song of mine. Just from the heart, it, it was you know him crying out about you know the death of a close friend and and being able to find some solace in that and being able to learn to fly again and become a new person in this new life without him. So it was a uh, you know as a young age, young man, you, you try to learn these lessons and those are things that are instilled to you by the coaches, by the teachers, by the people in your life and and just have to be a song that resonated with me and has been a part of my life the entire time. Sing it, Coach. I, I, I ain't never heard of that one. Oh, Learn to Fly? Yeah. Dang it. We're about to break the, break the machine here if I start singing. Uh, see, you, you, don't, sky, you don't have to say me. <laughs> looking for my sign of life. Looking for something to help me get things right. Oh, I, I heard that way. song. Yeah, I heard, oh, yeah. I heard that song. We, oh, we yeah. were trying. We going to try to stop you. You didn't really have to sing the song, but the fact that you were all in, Coach, that... <laughs> Dang, Peach, give, give him two more. Dang. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of people. We tried to get them to sing. They be like, "Nope, I'm not doing it." But you were all in. That's what we love to see, Coach. All right. Awesome. So, what is something that football has taught you that you can use when you're not on the field? Let's be honest. It's, it's given me a platform that I would never have in any other life, any other ability. Um, when you look at my upbringing, my growth. Uh, military child, father was always overseas or, or was involved with whatever was going on at the time. And, you know, regardless of political affiliation, whatever, that was his job. And grew up essentially with a single mom that was always doing everything, working her tail off to provide for me and my sister. And when you look into what the coaches provide, they provide someone that was there. Whether or not my dad was there or not, they were always there. They were always one that could provide us kind of that on-the-spot feedback. Um, obviously back then you didn't have FaceTime, you didn't have phone. It was all handwritten letters, right? It's a completely different world now, right? what they did back then. But from them, it was just having someone to look into and know that they believed in what you had, regardless of skill, regardless of ability. It was you as a person was, was going to be great in something. Let's use football as a way to find that and find how to overcome those things to get to that point. And that's been a huge mantra of mine. Uh, since the beginning, I tell my kids on the first day, like, I'm grateful for them. I, I do not have a job without them, whether it's teaching or coaching. And we're all meant to be great at something. We're born to be great at something. Let's find that together. and Let's find a way to at least get that train rolling as a teenager. So that way, as an adult, you're ready to go. All right. So B. Jones and I, we're going to produce a movie centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actor. Who should we get to play you in the story of your life? Man. Funny enough, the way I spell my name is actually from Nicolas Cage. I know that's going to be too eccentric of a, of a name there. Um, I can't imagine the way he, he acts is not my personality whatsoever. Um, you know, I, maybe a Ben Affleck, Matt Damon type. You know, I, I, Ooh, go I like the Ben Affleck I'm, one. I'm going to go with that one. You know, now, um, I like I like the Nicolas Cage because he he's not doing a lot right now. and We probably could afford him. Yeah, um, we can get, we can't get, get him. Ben is with J Lo now, so we ain't gonna be able to get him. But <laughs> Nicholas you know Cage would be like, "Why? Well, right, fine. How much y'all got? Come on, yeah. we got about fifty dollars, Nick. We just need you for fifteen minutes. Can you do that for us? All got, right. your, got your hot meal ready to go. Yeah. yeah, no yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, B Jones and I, we love to travel, and we love to support anybody, anyone that's come on this show. We come out there and watch your games. Mm -hmm. But before the games, we got to eat, Coach. So, what's that one food spot that gets your stamp of approval? And what's your go-to meal there? Well, I kind of go through the rounds there. Um, being at North Texas, and I know we're talking about now, but being at North Texas, it was always Roosters downtown. Uh, phenomenal little joint there right next to Fuzzies, right next to Dan Silverleaf. Um, you got the downtown entertainment area, all that good stuff with jazz, music, rock, rock whatever. So you always had a good time there, uh, but you can't go wrong with the BA burger. It's a hamburger with grilled cheeses as the buns. 
So as a big time offensive lineman, being 300 pounds, that was my go-to meal. Can't go wrong with that one every time you're in Denton. Uh, worked in Sherman for five years, and there's a little Salvadorian place called La Placita. Uh, if you've never had pupusas, gotta give them a shot. You gotta give them I a shot. I love pupusas. Them. Love them. Mm -hmm. Put the little cabbage and carrots on top, the cortito. <sighs> Can't be touched. Just phenomenal mm -hmm. stuff. And good fish tacos, too. I'm a huge fan of the fish tacos over there. Um, had a little pit stop at Plano East in Murphy. And um, there's a couple hamburger joints down there by the stadium that are worth going to. So if you ever go to Kimbrough, just head a little bit further south. And uh, you'll be able to hit a couple joints there right by, uh, I think, Sprouts and Lowe's and all that kind of stuff. And then Prosper, they have a place called The Gin that my family likes to go to. Uh, typical American food, but phenomenal uh, phenomenal kind of set up outside on a, on a summer day like this or a fall, fall night, go out and hang out and enjoy some cool weather on a patio and just eat some pretty good food with some good company. Coach sounds like an Epicurean, KT. I mean, he just yeah. brought in like four or five different restaurants. We might, I'm about to watch that back just so I can get all of those different places. So we're oh, definitely yeah. going to every single one of those. All right, so if you hit that subscribe button or think about doing so, please do. Leave us your top five music artists, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. And finally, go to our website, sltugotnext.com to learn more about us and our other You Got Next family members. Now allow me to turn over to B as he tells us more about our newest play cousin, Coach Nicholas Summerfield. So B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Coach Nico, man, I'm going to tell you, just 10, 10 seconds into this thing, you got you got that vibe. You you got that you got that coach speak. It, it's like I felt like I was talking to a future just like Hall of Fame coach on this thing. I, you know, I don't I don't know what the level is, but before we before we talk about what's going on in your world and how did you get to this level, coach? Uh, we got to talk about the beginning. Like when did when did you start playing football? And just really tell tell us about your football journey, coach. Absolutely. Uh, fortunate enough to grow up, once again grow up military. Lived in Germany for about eight years growing up. That's all I knew at the time. And at that point, it was soccer, basketball, t-ball. You know, you're pretty simple uh, little kids' sports there. But football is not that big. Uh, my, my first exposure to them was Frankfurt Galaxy and watching NFL Europe and watching those guys run around. So that was the I first time I've ever seen your, Hey, I used to love watching those guys. Dude, awesome. I'm, I'm sure they look at it like they do XFL and USFL and all that kind of stuff. But let's be honest, football's football. When you go out and watch sports, you, you love it for the game of what it is and what these guys are trying to do. And now looking back – knowing that these guys are trying to earn roster spots, trying to move their way up, trying to find a last chance or second chance or whatever the case may be. Like, you appreciate that part of it. And being able to see that live, especially with the fan bases overseas, unmatched, right? Unmatched in, in the way they bring their passion to the game. And here we go, fast forward a couple of years. I'm eight years old. I'm finally moving back to Texas. Uh, we're trying to establish ourselves. I'm meeting new people, meeting new friends. And then, of course, everybody I know is playing football. <laughs> hey mom, can, can, can I go play? Can I go join? Like, I, don't, I don't know what this is. And from yellow team Panthers all the way up to Palo Alto Middle School, Colleen High School, and then walking out in North Texas. I mean, my career was just always for the love of the game and just being able to be with my buddies and, and enjoy that process. And I was fortunate enough to have uh, friends that have gone along with this journey for me, even guys that we talk as coaches now at the high school level, that we've been on this journey since the third grade. And we've all had different levels of success and our different levels of our lives right now with the coaching career because of our time together on that little pee we feel down there by Lions Park. Now, coach, you look you look like the cover of, of Maxim magazine. You look, you know, you GQ, you super fly on the pitch over there. I can tell right now just from the way you were rocking the T-shirt, you in super shape, but you threw me off. I'll, I'll be honest, you threw me off when you said you was 300 pounds. How tall are you, coach? Or well, not anymore. So that was back in college. I'm six foot tall. I'm talking about. So I can tell yeah. you put in the work. So I, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to dig. I'm fishing for some information here. Like how, how, tall, how tall were you when you when you were playing in college ball, coach? Hey, six foot even. NFL came in and crushed my dreams. They said you're six foot tall, and that's it. So yeah, really? whatever the program said, I'm still part of the club. Six foot tall, but yeah, I cannot believe was, that the NFL turned down a six footer. That's I mean, nah. What well, you you, play the center? you you can't be a center at that's six foot. Well, that's okay. what I did, and, my, and uh, if you want to talk about that, look at a guy like Jeff Saturday, undrafted guy, picked up by Baltimore, had a great career with the Colts. Exactly. Uh, you know, on my end, I, I knew going into this, and, and we talked about the coaching stuff as a player, I knew going into it that college was going to be it. Like, I probably right. wouldn't have an opportunity after that, but I didn't want to. I kind of wanted to take that 12, 13 years I played and yeah. move on to something else, move on to something bigger and better, and that's where coaching kind of came into effect. And 
you know, it was just it was a natural transition at that point. Yeah. Go from the college level and as a player now just turn into a GA ship and, and start my career that way. What, 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 what clicked though, coach, what connected you? How did you know so early? You know, we, we hear, we hear everybody has a, a unique story of how they became a coach. It's kind of like your, your thumbprint, right? It's, it's unique to yourself and nobody else can duplicate it, but what made it click to you and resonate with you? Like, Hey, I love playing the game, but something is calling me to give back. Something is calling me to help, you know, define, refine, shape and mold the future generation of men. Because football, as much as we love football, the gladiators on the sport, the sport is really about shaping men and, and you know, and, and growing these guys into just being amazing people and how to handle life. So what made you connect with that? I mean, a lot of that started from high school. Uh, the programs I was a part of, I was part of the International Baccalaureate Program, which is kind of on par with the AP style. Instead of AP going against people in other states, we're going against kids across the world and our test scores and everything are based off of that. So, the teachers I had in that program poured into us tremendously. And, I, and to this day, you know, I, I always think about them and the stuff they did. And can I even compare to them and when I'm doing my lesson plans, when I'm giving out my instruction, can I even touch what they were doing with us? And, you know, one that really stuck out to me was Ms. Beth Acock, who's now a uh, principal down in Salado, I believe. And the way she impressed me, I, I went to college thinking I was going to be a math teacher. I had no idea about playing football. At that point, I was just a regular student. Um, had every intention just to be a teacher. And I, I just kind of fell in love with that idea of learning every day because we always talk about being lifelong learners. Might as well be one of the people that kind of guides that conversation, not just being a passive, you know, passenger, if you will. Um, so going into college, once again, kind of got bored freshman year. I had nothing else athletically going on and said, you know what? I'm still staying in shape. I'm still running around. I got my buddies with me, so once again, from the third grade up. Like, we're just going to try out. We're going to see what happens. And hell, the best man at my wedding, both of us made the team. We were fortunate enough to make the team at North Texas as sophomores and kind of start our journey from there. And it was around that junior year where, you know, you kind of look around, you see some bigger guys, strong guys, faster guys, but I always felt like I had a one leg up on them because I was just trying to work harder and harder on the film, on writing my notes, on the way I attack meetings, I attack workouts and all that. So that was my edge. And it kind of started spreading to the younger guys. And after a while, you kind of see coach, you know, kind of looking over and say, hey, you know, Somebody, can you go grab those guys and, and start walking through our inside zone technique or our, our power you know, steps or anything like that? Can you start working with them? And over time, it just kind of started clicking going, no, even though I'm a dad, I'm still coaching. I'm a coach. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunately enough, that first year out, some of the guys that we were coaching up and, and trying to push them to stay in the right direction end up being four year starters for us, led us to a bowl game. And, and you know, on the backs of just giants at the time for us, uh, having a small part of that felt amazing and that, that really started my career from there being able to be a part of that bowl game season at north texas not having it as a player but being able to be a part of that in the background and learning from so many coaches like uh, mike simmons who's at utep right now and you know coach dan mccarty and mike mike canales give me a start as an intern and just trying to start that career up you know i'm, I'm indebted to them because that's where it started you know it kind of spurred from there even with frank wintrick and the strength and conditioning side of things um, he's in the private sector now, but just the way he, he attacked it, his philosophy is able to grow us as young men and challenge us every day to do something bigger and better. That's how it started. That's really the catalyst at that point. There was always something within, but just it didn't really spark until kind of that second or third year part of the program. Well, this is the part like I get to talk about Rock Hill because I'm gonna tell you something. Those of you from Rock Hill that's watching this, I'm jealous of y'all. I, I kind of wish I can go in the, the Michael J. Fox time machine, go back in time so I could go to high school at Rock Hill <laughs> because not too many people can get out of class, get out of geometry, and go grab them some Starbucks and then uh, and then head to their next class. Like y'all got it made at Rock Hill. I saw this gorgeous campus. It looks like a Division One college and I, i'm just hearing how prosper is handling the whole education thing what, what is it like being on a campus like that given the given the type of resources that that you guys have coach like you said it feels like a college and that's that's kind of the cool part about it is not a set structure as far as uh, you know like drill sergeant or military type school i mean you give the kids the freedom and the trust to go out and just express themselves and i don't know how many environments that they have truly in their lives that they get to do that so not only can we do it from a school standpoint, we can do it from an athletic standpoint. And once again, every kid has value within your program. Every kid has value within their environment here. And that's what we talk about with our philosophy, at least in our ICU mantra and what we try to do here at Rock Hill. 
Now, as far as the the other schools in the district, I mean, we're all following the same lead. You know, we talk about we are one, we are prosper because we're trying to do the same goal. These are still our kids. I don't care if the third high school just opened up. Those are still kids that were at Rock Hill last year that grew up with this. Um, you know, you want to talk about adversity. This school opened up during COVID. It opened up in 2020. Sure did. And we're fourth year now, second head coach. Handful of coaches have come through. Handful of kids have come through. Like We're still establishing who we are as a play department, but the school part has been established for four years now. So being able to have that and be able to con- continue to grow that is just amazing. I mean, our fourth high school is going to open up in two years, and the district has done nothing but a phenomenal job just investing into us as coaches with our quad A programs. Uh, they invest with us as far as the resources in the classroom. It's, it's top-notch stuff because they know what's coming ahead. They know high school five and six and whatever else is beyond that is down the road. So if we don't do that now and we don't have that footprint now, it's going to be hard to just try to play catch up once you multiply that by four, five, and six. So, Coach, so so you talk about y'all still trying to establish identity on the football side, but you started in COVID, and now you got a group of guys that kind of came together in the worst possible situation. Who now we're looking at that senior year, that senior, that last year of having that opportunity to be on campus, to be a part of this program, and th- this is the face of the program, right? This is this is the this is where the rubber meets the road. This is the okay. group that we're going to look back from ten years and say, hey. We're here now because of what these guys did. Tell us, tell us about this senior class and, and what the expectation is for this Rock Hill team, 23-24 version. Hey, no, no matter where we are in the season right now, it's sky high. And, and let's be honest, those kids, once you said, have gone through hell and back. They've opened up during COVID. They had a you know, quasi-hybrid year. Last year was the first official year back, and now all of a sudden we're in the new norm, You know, whatever you want to call that nowadays. And in that time frame, they've had two head coaches, a couple different coordinators, you know, new assistant coaches coming in. I mean, the footprint is here, the mantra is here, but obviously being able to develop that takes some time. And the most consistent thing about this program has been the kids that have been a part of it in our senior class as well. Very top heavy when it comes to that, but for good reason, because those kids chose to be here from the beginning. They've rocked out since the entire, since the inception of this school. And now they're getting the fruits of those labors because of it. And they're marking that legacy now for the rest of time. For whatever this school does going forward, it's because of what these young men and young women have done in our programs for the last four years. And really, going into the future now, they can be proud of that fact no matter what happens. Now, Coach, how can I order me a Rocky or jersey? Y'all got the dopest uniform. Kevin, have you seen the Rocky or uniform? They fly. Hey, hey, when y'all come out, y'all be super swag. I, I love the Rock Hill version. But let's talk Let's talk a little bit about your, your coaching off the field because uh, I, I can tell by energy is something special about you just as a human being. But you actually go above and beyond to really – uh, extend your arm or extend your reach to not just be a great coach, but you're a part of I, I look like half a dozen organizations. Each one of these organizations, you have a, a very intricate role in it. I saw that you were a rock mentor. I recently learned what rock mentors do and how important that is to kind of lift that next generation of a coach to help them to get adjusted and uh, provide them resources and information. T- tell us a little bit about your endeavors and why is this, why do you feel it's so important to not just be a coach in there for your team and for your school, but to be a coach of just coaching coaches, essentially. Yeah, that, and that's the big part about THSCA, our Texas High School Coaches Association. We're here to coach coaches. And, you know, the dream would be to be a part of that program or AFCA or any type of governing body that can help others help those kids. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're doing. Whatever knowledge I may have, small in scope compared to the giants in our industry, but whatever knowledge I have, I want to pass it on to a young coach so that they don't go through the same issues and hardships because I was a hard-headed kid thinking I knew it all, right? Or when you look at it from the standpoint of, well, if I can take something that's going well with another program and it can help my kids now, I'm foolish to not implement that or at least have that discussion and throw it out there, right? When we're sitting here with a staff of 14, 15 coaches, that should be 14 to 15 avenues of other programs, other ideas, other staffs that we can pour into our kids and hopefully make that a beneficial factor going forward. So looking at THSEA, you know, that's a big part of what we do here, uh, making sure that directly our Texas high school athletes are taken care of and our programs and our schools are taken care of and and highlighted for what they do, not only on the field, but more importantly in the classroom. Um, Having those super elite teams, having those all academic teams is is funded through that program. Uh, Being able to be a rock mentor means the world to me and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the folks at Plano ISD that gave me that opportunity, even though I was there for a short amount of time. Uh, They they trusted me enough to at least be a representation of what they were doing at Plano East, what they were doing at Plano ISD 
And I can't thank Jeff Smith and Ralph Hines and KK enough for you know having that opportunity to be a part of this program because now I'm sitting in the same room as UIL directors. I'm sitting in the same room as our Board of Regents directors and, and the most prolific head coaches that have gone through and are coming up through the ranks. Not only in football, but we're talking about baseball, basketball, softball, track, tech, whatever, right? Coaching still coaching. I don't care what the sport is. You're going to find something from them that you can take back now and be a part of. So being a part of that for the last two years as a mentee uh, with Bob DeBest, the head coach at Grapevine, as my mentor, and then being a part of the advocacy program, kind of the middle bridge between the two, and being able to now you know talk to other coaches and, and kind of have that role, it, it's, it's invaluable. And they just tweeted out yesterday or the day before, hey, applications are open. So guys, if there's any coach listening to this right now, go sign up. Talk to your ADs. Talk to your principals. Talk to somebody that's going to have your back and say, hey, this is a young coach that wants to do the right thing in this profession. Not here for the money. Not here for the accolades or anything like that. They're here because there's 500 kids a day that they get to impact, not only in the classroom but on the field. So if you have that ability, go do it. Like Be a part of it. Jump right in. And that just carries over into all the other programs we're a part of. You know, AFCA being able to be with Adam uh, Harvey and doing these skills and drills. If you ever come to the AFCA conventions and you go to the little turf area, I'm trying to be on that field. I'm trying to learn from the coaches that are demonstrating. Yeah. I'm trying to shake their hands and get to know them, make those contacts. And no better way to do it than when you're actually talking about football rather than just looking at a screen or looking at a whiteboard. That's right. That's right. Now, Coach, we, 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 we always look at the results on Friday nights mm -hmm. and we butcher these coaches. Oh, how did they do that? You know, we are, we are armchair quarterbacks and we say, oh, how'd you go for it on fourth and one? You know, well, you know, it's the hindsight is 2020. But uh, but you took you you take the coaching and you took it to a different level by signing up to become a recruiting coordinator. And the reason I'm saying this is because you don't know how many times you'll hear somebody complain in the barbershop or they, they talk about their kids because everybody love their kid. Mm -hmm. Everybody kid need to be playing for, for LSU and Florida State and for, for UT and Texas Tech and, and guess who fault it is? It's always the coach. They, <laughs> they didn't use my boy the right way. They didn't, they didn't help my kid, but but tell us a little bit about the role. I, I'm just, I just want us all to get educated on what a recruiting coordinator does and what is your role in helping these kids get to that next level and then play collegiate ball? It's, it's all about education and communication. Uh, right now we have a sport to you set up. Uh, that's how we communicate as an athletic department to our stakeholders, whether it's parents, fans, or uh, the kids themselves. And we'll update anything going on. Like the NCAA right now, their rules are changing daily. Their rules are changing weekly. And if we're and not we, up to date on that... We ain't going to talk kids. about the NCAA rules, Coach. Oh, yeah. I mean, good oh, grief. Yeah. Good luck to you for keeping up with all that. You got a PhD just to keep up with all that. I'm trying stuff. to tell you. That's but that's so. Tell us a little bit about this platform, so coaches and uh, and the and the and the parents have access to jump on this and see what's going on with the rules. And, and you you head up that that information channel. Just try to provide quick bites here and there. A lot of it's just reminders. Like today, I have a scheduled one that's going to go out before we get to our team meetings, and it'll just tell the kids, "Hey, it's Sunday. Coaches are done with their game. They're probably doing their power hours and calling kids around. They're probably doing a lot of recruiting today." Now is a great time to start putting in your highlights from the last two weeks. Yes. And start putting out information about your stats, putting out information about your transcripts. And once again, you, you talk about that that kind of judgment on, on the coaches. Hey, they're not doing this, they're not doing this. Well, you got to have those meetings. And a big thing that we do here at Rock Hill is I put the onus on the kids to say, hey, before I talk any recruiting, you need to schedule a time with me. You need to schedule a time with us as coaches to show me that you really want to do this. Don't just say it. Don't just say you want to be mm. on Twitter and... and love the kind of grooming of hey we want you to come to this school we want you to be a part of this we are going to show you this graphic we're going to give you these whatever this accolade this attention whatever this no one's going to care about that if you're not serious about it. that's right and if it doesn't start with you i don't want to hear from mom and dad i don't want to hear from uncle and so and so if you don't want to do it as an athlete that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but let's make sure you're set up for the next step whether it is college military trade school Whatever the next chapter is, we're here to do that. And even as a recruiting coordinator, I still take on that role because I want that for that kid. So how do you how do you have that conversation though? Because I mean, like I said again, we all think we all think our stuff don't stink. You know what yep. I'm saying? Hey, can't nobody lie to me like me, coach. So mm -hmm. so so how do you have that conversation? We're like, listen, Petey, I, kn I know you're working hard. I, kn I know you want to go to to this big school. I know Texas A&M was your dream school growing up, but. You know, realistically, you, you need to be looking at like a Harden Simmons or, you, or just any of the other local programs just so you can get that education and continue your career without it coming off as Coach Nico Hayden. Yeah. 
really just talk to them about what their life goals are. If you want to go to college, awesome. What's your degree plan? And at most of the time, that stumps them. They have no clue. Right? <laughs> it does me no good to go to a school that's all about education when I want to be a business guy. Or if I want to do engineering, but then they're all about, I don't know, fine arts. You know, some of them on those lines. <clears throat> so you got to find a school that's going to match up what you want anyways. And what, they, what parents, kids, even coaches don't realize is, yeah, you have all these schools throughout the country, all these divisions, all these different conferences. And when you start looking at what type of program gives you the best opportunity for your future, that pull shrinks very quickly. Yes, it does. Right? Yes, it does. And being able to visualize that for a kid hopefully helps. And when you talk about the breakdown of what's going on, uh, I want to say less than 30% of all college athletes are a Division One athlete. The vast majority are going to be your D2, D3, NAI, JUCO, yep. UD College. There's even sprint football now, which not a lot of people know about. And that's for kids that are 185 pounds or less. They can still go play football up north. And I think there's a division of nine and seven, maybe 16 total teams. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of opportunities out there. But are you willing to make those chances? Are you willing to go from a place like Rock Hill that may have top of line, which they don't may have. They, we do. We have yes. top of line facilities. We have top of line gear, equipment, everything. Are you willing to leave that and go to a school that may not have those things? in still pursuit of playing college football man we got to continue this conversation on another day coach we run it short on time but man i'm having i'm having such a blast but the guy that 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 is some that is some dope tidbits some dope gems you drop it but coach nico it is time for the championship rounds this is the part of the show with kt and i we do a little bit of one-on-one and you are now officially calling all the shots have you ever played would you rather before coach oh yeah all right, so the rules are super simple. Both KT and I are going to give you a pitch. We're going to give you an option. Whichever one of those options you select, that host gets a point. The first host gets two points. We'll win this episode. The best out of three, of course, is what we're trying to go to, all right? And uh, Kevin is the two-time defending champ. So, KT, let's go. Let's get it kicked off. B. John, I'll just take it one game at a time. So, you don't have to talk about my winning streak. So, it's just one game at a time, sir. Just it ends game. today. It ends today. Oh, we'll right. see. We'll see. All right, Coach, would you rather coach a player that no one gave them a chance they make it to the football hall of fame and then their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without you or or you go on to your dream job you become a head coach you stay in that position for you know for the rest of your career you retire regardless of rings or whatever you go into this school's hall of fame and say hey coach nico summerfield we got the field named after coach nico summerfield in 40 years man you, if, if you asked me this question 10 years ago when I started, it's definitely the Hall of Fame. It's definitely put my name on the field and, and, and renaming Leo Buckley to Nick Summerfield, you know, whatever yeah. the case may be. Nowadays, it, it, you got to look at the numbers. You got to look at what's happening. You're impacting 500 kids a day. You're looking at a kid that you may be the only positive influence or positive interaction he has all day or she has all day, regardless of the situation. That's more important to me because I look at these kids now that grow up, they're graduating college, they're getting married, they're having kids. And for that person to now call me back and say, hey, coach, you know, you have no idea how much I appreciate what you've done. Or I appreciate you reaching out knowing that I was sick or I got hurt or something happened tragically with my family. And getting those calls to, to you know, go to their weddings, go to funerals for their aunt, uncles, whoever it is. Being a part of their lives is more rewarding than anything else we'll ever. Those material goods awesome that's they great. i'm glad that i'm yeah. glad that trophy case looks good but something inside of you is is going to be hollow something inside you is going to be missing and and being able to be a part of their lives whether you know it or not you may not know for 40 years from now but being able to know that you have an impact on somebody else and just them showing gratitude for it trumps any championship we'll ever have wrong answer all right <laughs> <laughs> Round number two. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I didn't think you going to do that. After he said that, I, you cold hard to be done. All right. <laughs> what, round two, would you rather travel the world hosting your own food show on ESPNU where you get to rock with other college coaches and high school coaches and, you know, pick their brains as they take you to their favorite place to eat in the towns that they coach in or... Or we get Netflix on that beautiful, lush... Rock Hill campus and we film a documentary over the next two years it's kind of like a last chance you style documentary that we're going to put out there and we're going to call it the Rock Hill way Rock, rocking with Rock Hill I don't know we're going oh, yeah. hey, to Blue Hawk Nation something like that but uh, mm-hmm. we're going to basically film the Rock Hill story and put it out there on Netflix man and you know that thing will go bananas oh I know 
Uh, we're going to tie this thing up 1-1 because personally, I would love the Food Network show. I'd love to travel. I'd love to do all that selfishly. But to be honest, I'd rather those kids get the acknowledgement. I'd rather highlight those kids and what they're about to do in their lives and the things that they're providing for their families and in the school. So I'd rather do the Netflix documentary and highlight those guys. Yeah, he got one right. All right, here we go. So I disagree, B. Jones. I mean, I could bring my iPhone out there and record y'all, Coach. If you just really need somebody to record, I'm just saying. Uh, hey, there might be some good footage, too. All right, Coach, so for the final round, we're going to take it to the sneaky game. Kevin and I are both big-time sneakerheads. As a matter of fact, we go live every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. During that show, I do a, a, a bit or a skit called uh, The Drop. And in The Drop, I'm talking about the new sneaks that's about to hit the streets and everybody need to go out there and cop. It's just a fun show, so y'all come mm -hmm. hang out and rock with us. But without you knowing it, before the show, Kevin and I selected a pair of sneakers. Remember I said I got to go back, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. I had to go run to my sneaker vault, and I had to pick a pair of sneakers that I thought that would define and represent you and your university or your, your institute. Rock Hill University is really what it looked like, but Rock, <laughs> <laughs> but Rock Hill <laughs> High School. And so what we're going to do on the count of three, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to say, hold that sneaker. And once you do that, and we're going to show you what we got, okay? Sounds good. All right. On the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Hold that sneaker. Dang it. So, funny enough, force is there. Game day attire, coaches attire, team issued. That's our game day attire right there. Sorry, other way. There you go. So, wait, right wait, now. Wait, wait. You go with the head coach. I'm going with the head coach on this one. That is team oh. issued right there. That is staff rocking the same shoe. And now he's going to be on a. Oh, my God. That three game win streak right there. <laughs> You I'm going playing James. Hey, it ain't about you right now. It's about me talking. When you take everything <sighs> one game at a time, B. Jones, you see what happens? You got to trust the process. So I got a three game process, but you know. His his three game process is go with ones, which are one of the most popular <laughs> shoes, and everybody goes with them. All right, hey, all right, coach. What a time to hit the game, man. Yeah, I know, right? I can't, I can't, I can't get mad. Hey, hey Nick Saban, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. All right, well, coach, the title of the show is Sports Life Talks. You got Nick. We talk about the past. We talk about how you got here to this current sport, uh, this current place. Everybody who's rocking this and watching this, they know you're super dope, coach. But we got to ask because because you seem like a very humble and cerebral type guy. So, what, what in your own opinion, what does the future hold for you, coach? Man, right now, that's that's the next step I'm trying to figure out. I got my hands in a little bit of everything. Got people in my back pocket and my support system that are pushing me to think outside the box and think outside of the role I have now just to see the big picture and see where I really fit down the line. Um, I know we get caught up as coaches looking at the 35 under 35, and we got to hit these benchmarks as we go through our career. But, I mean, you got to be loyal to the soil. If you can just be where your feet are right now, those things will come over time. And as long as you continue to develop and grow and plant that seed and continue to water it, you know, down the line, athletic director, head coach, whatever it is, I, I feel confident enough that I'll be successful and I'll at least have the resources to make sure those kids get what they need. The, the famous words, be where your feet are. You just got a promotion, coach. Sorry, Rock Hill. Hey, coach, real <laughs> quick, we're running out of time, but uh, give us a 30 second clip. What we, what we gonna see out of this Rock Hill team when y'all touch the field? Cause me and Kevin, we coming to a game. What are we gonna Absolutely. see? Hey, right now, you're going to see a lot of fight. You got kids right now that want it bad. They've been here for four years. Uh, you know, they got a lot to prove right now. There's a chip on their shoulder, and we just want to make sure we do right by those kids and invest in them any way we can, whether it's nutrition, sports psych, sports performance. Obviously, you see our facilities and, and the people in the building right now that make this thing run. No matter what it is, these kids are going to be cared for and loved for, and it just shows in the way they play for one another. All right, so do you have any uh, shout-outs you want to give? Absolutely. I know I give a shout-out to the Plan ISD staff, but – you know, big time shout out right now to my wife and my son. Uh, best part of my day is going home to them, no matter how good, how bad a day is. You love every second of it. And, and being able to have this job and be a part of their lives and, and not just burn the midnight oil. I can't do what I do here without them too. And, and that's what that's my why. That's why I get up in the morning and do what I do for these kids. Uh, being able to give a shout out to uh, coaches at North Texas I had that I mentioned before. Uh, guys like J.D. Martinez out of Bridgeport now. Our OC, Derek Thompson. And our head coach right now, Mark Wilkinson who those five years in Sherman shaped the future that we have now. And we wouldn't be here without our time together there. And it's those connections and those relationships that you build that obviously lead to opportunities down the line. And I'm blessed for what I'm doing right now because of those guys and because of those coaches that poured into me through and through. And obviously shout out to THSCA and their board, AFCA and their board, 
uh, you know, just phenomenal people right now doing great things across the state. And I, I wish every one of them could get highlighted like this every time. All right, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think you have next. Tell me, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have next? Uh, I don't think he's done, he's done this yet, but I know he's a phenomenal young coach. Same deal, uh, working D-line. He's a head power lifting coach, recruiting coordinator, one of the rock mentees as well uh, from this 2023 class, and it has made a you know tremendous impact on me as a young coach. And you know, I want to highlight this young man as well. And I know I sound super old saying that, but he is just a, a, another rising star in this profession. That's going to be Tyron Evans out there in Huntsville. All right, Coach Evans, represent Huntsville. You are officially on the clock. We're going to reach out to you, get you on the show so you can tell your story. I'm super excited about it. I've enjoyed this one so much. You, you could have said anybody. I was like, hey, if they, if they <laughs> roll with Coach Nico, they the truth. Coach Nico Summerfield. You got next. You the truth, Coach. Hey, I, I, I just I can't I can't gush enough about you. I can give you a lot of words and a lot of affirmations, but you deserve all of it. Every rose coming your way. You are the future of the game, Coach. And I can't wait to see what what the future has in store for you because we rock it. I'm, I'm the biggest fan. Like I said, I need to I need to get me a Rock Hill jersey with, with Summerfield on the back of that thing because this <laughs> is you super dope, Coach. You are extraordinary and elite. You deserve a. Yeah. Hey, we're going to get y'all out of here. I'm going to be quick about this. First and foremost, thank y'all for watching another episode. We appreciate you so much. We can't do it without you. Don't forget to tap in with us at Sports Life Talk on all of our social media platforms. We out here. This is our year, and we're doing big things. We can't do it without you. So make sure you tap in, and uh, we drop social media content every single day day uh also if you want to get on the show uh hope, hopefully everybody will blow this show up and everybody get the opportunity to see it but i know it's some talented athletes it's talented coaches that you just story and like i said espn ain't gonna talk about you we will mm -hmm. go to our website slt you got next.com and go to the nominations tab tell us a little bit about who you are tell us about why you think you got next and we're gonna reach out to you and give you an audition to be on the show also podcast companion we actually have this in the just the straight up riding in the car chilling and i think this is probably one of the best episodes to just listen to in the car because he sounds so crispy this is going to be a, just some really good information that you could probably listen back to but going forward on future episodes if you can't catch it on youtube make sure you go check us out on spotify or our apple apple podcast because it's there for you to listen to every single episode we drop and we probably still got about 20 or 30 episodes we're gonna drop this i mean more than that really we, we try to drop four or five shows week so we got more coming your way and uh eight o'clock p.m wednesday night come hang out with your boys we'll have a good time but we're gonna get y'all out of there kt let's go coach thank you so much for rocking with us whatever you need from us please let us know and we got your back absolutely guys it's been a pleasure on my end i, ca I can't wait to continue to grow this relationship and obviously get you guys out to a game Hey, Coach, you the first person to say that, Chameleon. I've, the whole show I've been riding dirty. <laughs> Next has been riding dirty. The whole show I've been thinking about. <laughs> hey, Sports <laughs> Life Talk, we love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! The craziest. I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next is a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it. You're a winner just like me. You got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah. If you got next, if you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next, if you got next, yeah. Life talking this